You ever watch K-drama and then find out there's a webtoon, a manhwa, and or a manga based on it and you're so excited, you're like, I need to read this. I need to see more. I need to learn more. And then you read it and it's nothing like the K-drama. Yeah, that happened to me again. What's up everyone? It's Carrie AK Nerdy Girl Crates. Welcome back to my channel. It's Manga Monday. And today, once again, we're going to look at something that's not from Japan. <laughs> no, we're going to do something a little different today because it's something I um come across a lot and I thought maybe it would make an interesting um subject for this uh specific um type of review. Uh, we are going to talk about The Island, which is a webtoon that was based on an actual, I guess you could say manhwa or manga from 1997. It's kind of rebooted for the webtoons. Um, it is published by Yulab, and it is created by Inwon Yon. And I know I'm not saying that right, but somebody will correct me. And it's illustrated by Kunjil Yang. Now the first part, which is a reboot, is in black and white um, to kind of like mirror the original manhwa manga from 1997. Um, it, the reboot happened in May 2016. Then there was a part two that was released um, the following November, and that was done in color. Now, The Island is a supernatural thriller. Um, there is a K-drama that I just finished watching on Amazon Prime that is based, <laughs> or more like inspired by the webtoon. Um, the drama, and there's a reason why I'm breaking the uh, synopsis between drama and webtoon, and you'll find out why in a moment. The um, drama focuses on a young heiress... Uh, she is, um, finds herself kind of framed and in trouble, and her father sends her to Juju Islands to kind of repent. Uh, her name is Muhon Woon? Miho Woon? I will get, like, Rosetta Stone one day, I promise. Um, and she's sent there, uh, and she, as, and to work as, like, a counselor at this little high school. Um, unbeknownst to her is that she is actually the reincarnation of a woman from uh, centuries ago who has a specific ability to create a barrier that will keep all the demons from the underworld from attacking humanity. And unfortunately, when this original woman tried to do it, it ended in disaster. Don't want to spoil too much. Um, she is now the the next chance at them to do this. And um, there are, there's this demon slayer named Van who is um, hundreds of years old and he knew the original woman who died. And um, he was an orphan that was taken in by these Buddhists and they did something terrible to him and a bunch of other kids. And he and only one other survived this um, experiment where they were forced to drink demon blood to become part demon and the two that survived was Vaughn and another one named Guntan I think that's how you say his name and they are trained to be demon slayers they're, they're, they're kind of put in like a harsh environment they're not really like treated like humans they're kind of treated like pets and not really even pets more like attack dogs that are let off their leashes when they need them to do their job they're kind of put in a cage. Um, Van manages to hold on to a lot of his humanity, where Gukton, um, his resentment for the people who did this to him ends up clouding his mind, and he ends up becoming hateful of humans. Uh, during the night, the girl died. Um, they were meant to be killed because they thought the barrier was going to be up and they wouldn't need them anymore. They escaped. They attacked most of the Buddhists, killed most of the Buddhists. Flash forward, Van is still on the island. Um, he is hunting all the demons that are still there. 
he teams up with this old lady who's, I believe, a goddess, and um, her granddaughter that she adopted. <clears throat> Van uh, meets up with Wu Ho. I am like going all over the place, sorry. And he recognizes her as the reincarnation of this girl, and he had feelings for this girl. So it's more like a romantic type of supernatural thriller. They then also introduce another character, uh, Father Johan, who is a priest who's um, specifically trained in exorcisms, and he has these really cool powers of his own to fight off these demons. The webtoon. Some similarities, but not completely the same. Okay, first off, Wu Ho is once again sent to Juju Islands by her father to repent, uh, but she actually is a troublemaker and a spoiled brat in the, the manhwa webtoon. And um, she gets attacked by a demon, and Van happens to be there, and just like the scene in the drama, kills the demon, but the difference in the webtoon compared to the drama is Van was actually hunting her first. <laughs> He was hunting her first, he was going to kill her first, and he was mad that this demon beat him to it. So, he has more of the personality of Guntan from the drama than he does of the um, very um, humanistic Vaughn from the drama. He is sadistic, but um, he when he um, relays that now that she's been marked by the demons, they're going to keep coming for her, her being rich makes a deal with him um, and says, I will pay you so many millions per demon you kill. And at first he thinks she's um, crazy, but then uh, thinks about it and realizes, well, she's got the money. I can make some money doing this. So he, kind of like in the drama where he becomes her bodyguard, he becomes her bodyguard because of the money. Where in the drama, he becomes a bodyguard because he knows he needs to keep her alive in order to create the barrier. There is no mention about Wuho in this uh, webtoon of being some savior. She just seems to come off as just in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's nothing um, special about her except that she has money. She doesn't have any like secret reincarnations so far. I haven't completed the webtoons because it is very long. Um... Father Johan is in the story, but he comes in much later than he does in the drama, and he seems to be much younger in the webtoon than he is in the drama. He also isn't there to protect her. He was actually, um, he was adopted into a family, kind of like in the drama, but he ended up going and becoming a priest because he was taken in by the church. And he found out about his parents, so he goes back to Korea to find his parents. But during his trip, Wu Ho, <laughs> I'm going everywhere. It's different, okay? He gets uh, kidnapped by her because she needs an exorcist. We're in the drama. He is there to protect her too because he needs to make sure she fulfills her prophecy. Um, there's a lot more in the drama that kind of heavily balances on the two religions. Um, coming from different phase, and I can I kind of like understand that, especially with Korea where there's such a high Christian population as well as a Buddhist population, so it's kind of like trying to find out how would they coexist. In this, it's not as much um, because Van is just freaking evil, <laughs> and you know, Johan is there to do his exorcism, but then ends up staying to fight off all these demons. Um, the other difference is the drama is way toned down, okay? Yes, they have the demons, and some of the special effects are decent. I mean, you know, sometimes when you see shows outside of Hollywood, the special effects are not always as great. Their special effects are decent. Um, I've seen worse, but they're not bad. Um, it's toned down. They create more of a romantic atmosphere between uh, the female and male lead uh, Johan is more of a badass in the drama. There isn't as much gore or anything like that. Now, the webtoon is really dark, and every time you open up a chapter, there are mature warnings about the content, because they do, um, go into rape, which is only 
briefly mentioned in um, the drama. They go into a whole bunch of gore and just sadism at some points. Yeah, it is much darker, and uh, this would never make it onto a Korean television network. It might work better as a movie. The other thing that I find really interesting is the character of Goton. In the drama, he is kind of like the pseudo-brother to Van. He is like the fellow demon hunter, the only other one who survived the experiment. Um, he, however, has a more negative reaction to everything that's been done to him. Um, he blames all of humanity for what's happened to him, not just the ones who did it. He wants to take revenge. He wants to unleash all the demons upon the world. In the webtoon, he doesn't come in until part two. There's a whole different set of villains for the first part. Um, one of them is briefly makes an appearance in the drama, but he is more of the main antagonist in the actual webtoon. It's interesting. Um, there's like a whole group of them Van and her are facing off against. Um, and this is just pretty much the drama. It's pretty much Gotan and all the demons he's uh, awakened. The other thing is... In the webtoon, Gutan is not another demon hunter like Van. He is kind of part of this almost religious sect. He's he, he his appearance is um still got the white hair, but he's more of like a like an evil Buddhist. <laughs> um, and his uh, motivations are sl different than what the character in the dramas is. Um, he also has abilities. Um, some of his abilities do cross over into the drama with him being able to summon up demons and rejuvenate, but not the same character completely. Now, the other thing that's really interesting about the webtoon, and a lot of people um, probably don't know about this, and I'm wondering if this is something they're going to bring into the... Um, bring into the drama, because the way it ends is there's a chance for it to continue. Um, the webtoon is actually one story in a universe of stories. So it's part of a connective universe. Think Marvel, DC. And that's not something you see a lot in webtoons, not even in um, manga or manhwa itself. You don't really have these big connective universes with all these characters coming in. Sometimes you might have a special, and it's usually done more in an anime where these characters might meet up for like an episode or two in some type of weird one-off that's not continuity. But the island is actually part of a bigger universe, and that bigger universe um, is called the Super String Universe. You're saying to yourself, what the heck is a Super String Universe? The Super String Universe um, centers around the main female character of the island, Winho, Minho. And she uses her money because um, she finds out that there's like um, multiverses. Yeah, this, if you're going to capitalize on multiverses, now is the time. <laughs> and um, there's a moment in time when Jupiter comes into orbit with the moon and it causes some type of event, so she's got to prevent it. So she brings in all these heroes from all these other webtoons to help take them down. And there's a lot of crossover, kind of like a Marvel DC tough, like when you read the individual stories that focus on these characters, there's appearances from other characters, especially her organization that she, her corporation, appears in a lot of different other webtoons. Not always her herself, but other characters who are maybe just created for that story and that story alone, but they do connect some more than others. And I'm really interested to read the whole story to see how that plays out. It, it, it's kind of interesting, because not all of them are really supernatural based, so it's even more interesting to see how it comes together. Now, I'm thinking to myself, with K-dramas, you might get a second season. You don't really get continuing on series that much like you do with uh, America and even like England and Britain. Even anime, you don't get as many seasons. You don't go as long as, like, say, I don't know, Walking Dead. <laughs> but what was interesting is at the end of this drama, without really spoiling something, 
A group is introduced, and during my research on this universe, discovered that this group is a villain in a completely different webtoon that's connected in this universe. And they sow the seeds for her maybe putting a team together. So, not necessarily needs to be a season two to Island. It could be now this connective universe. So, it would be interesting to see. However, to wrap things up, I am kind of disappointed we are not getting that really dark story that you get in the webtoon because, yes, Van is sadistic compared to his K-drama counterpart. Um, he's more the Gukton from the drama, like I said earlier. But I also kind of understand if they are going to create a connective universe in K-dramas, they have to appeal to a wider audi audience. So you can't have, like this really dark serial killer personality as a hero in a K-drama, especially in a country that's very conservative, and especially when there's a lot of religious um, references in it, you're going to have to, like, really play it down, and the K-drama does kind of, like, do a nice balance of... You still feel the severity of the situation, but... It never gets too much like a rated R NC-17 horror film. <laughs> it it it's 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 TV friendly, and I guess if they are planning on doing a connective universe, because if you watch the 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 drama, you get to the end. If you don't know about the connected universe, you get the sense the story's going to continue. How it's going to continue depends on what they decide to do with the K-dramas. Um, the manga, or the manhwa, or the webtoon <laughs> for the island has finished. I have not completed it yet, but I am interested to see how this ends. Does Van change over the course of time? Um, there's other characters, too. I'm kind of disappointed we didn't get, I didn't mention it earlier, that... We're not in the drama that are in the um, webtoon who play a big part for the bigger universe. Um, you have Interpol gets involved. You've got even a Yakuza gets involved. You almost have like an international thing start to happen here on this island because the events that are going to happen if the bear, well, if they don't defeat the evil in the Hmong, in the webtoon will affect the entire world. Just like in the K-drama, but all they have to do in the K-drama is put the barrier up. I kind of feel like you put the barrier up, that's kind of like the end of the story. So I'm kind of curious on how they're going to continue it now that there's this barrier. Where in the webtoon, it continued on. It You didn't have something that completely, from what I understand, ends everything. So it doesn't make sense to continue. It's also building up a whole entire other threat in the, the webtoon. This one still kind of feels connected to, like, the original threat. <laughs> I'm rambling. I'm sorry. There is a big difference between the webtoon and the drama. The drama is more TV-friendly for families. There is some scary elements, but it never goes into the, like... You're never going to get that grotesque sore type <laughs> horror, okay? You, the, you, the, the male lead is um, likable. Um, you kind of feel his torment and his pain. He has feelings for the me female character. The webtoon is much darker, much more sadistic, much more <laughs> terrifying, much more gory. Um, the main character is pretty much he's evil. Um, time will tell if that stays that way. But yeah, it's there's a lot of differences between the two of them, and I notice this happens a lot when I watch a K-drama and then discover there's a webtoon. I'm thinking about talking more about that in other um, episodes of Manga Monday. If you're interested, please let me know down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This was about the island. It is still available on Webtoons. The drama is on Amazon Prime right now. Um, it's wrapped up at least its first season, from what I understand. But I think it's going to continue one way or another. Um, 
if you would like to see more videos like this of me comparing K-dramas to their webtoon, manhwa, manga counterparts, let me know. I would be more than happy to do that. I do have a few other ones already I know of that I would like to cover. One of them I already actually reviewed the the printed version of the webtoon. And I'm finishing up that series right now as we're talking on uh, television. I've gone on enough. I don't know. It's it's late on a Sunday and I've had a weekend. <laughs> but um, yeah, again, that's The Island, the webtoon, and then The Island, the K-drama. Please let me know down below what you think. Is there anything else you want me to check out, recommend? I've rambled enough. I'm going to go to bed after I edit this video. I hope uh, you all have a great day. And don't forget to check out my links below. I've got Right Stuff Anime, where you can get some really great deals on manhwa and manga, as well as some figures and much, much more. So please use that link if you're going to shop on there. If there is anything else, I want to say bye, and I will see you on the next video.